Pride One already released their 2.0 tier list, but we have post Sparkle tier list now. And I've made a few videos about Sparkle and uh, whatever, the tiers, the placement, the top five teams, all that fun stuff. But today I wanted to give you guys something a little different, a little special. I grabbed Moon and I grabbed Rihu and then I slapped this all together and we went over the entire tier list to pretty much give all of our thoughts, right? I wanted a little bit more of a perspective besides my own, as well as the chat we did this live on Twitch. And it was pretty cool. So you guys are gonna see the full expansion of everything. We talked about Jing Yuan, talked about Sparkle now that she's here, where her place in the meta is. We talked about Ron May, and we even talked about Daniel, because some of you guys think that I hate Daniel, but I don't. Before we get into that though, yo, you guys wanna see my new desk? This is the desk I've been using for the last year or so, and it's great, but because of all the desk setups I've seen on Twitter lately, I got this, the new FlexiSpot E8 standing desk. I'm not completely finished with the setup yet, so bear with me, but do you see how much space I have now? I got all this arm space to play games like Wuthering Waves and Apex. And look at this, it stands up with the press of a button. Oh my God! I've been lazily trying to get back into shape and this new flexi spot standing desk lets me force myself to get more active while working. The best part is I can still get kills in Fortnite, no problem. Get your own standing desk with my link in the description down below. Thanks, flexi spot. Henshin to go go baby, what's good guys? Yoku here and we're gonna be doing this live with the stream and whatnot. And I'm not washed big, yo, suck my dick. Anyway. Crazy. We're going to be doing wow. our tier list review for Pride Win. And I have my guest Ooh. here, Moon, who refuses to go on camera. And then I also have Rihu, who is on camera, and that's my boy. So, you know, we're here now <laughs> trying something new. All right. Hello. No, you don't get to say hello. You want to be Pixel Crazy. Boy. So you, you say hello after everyone else says hello in the chat. Everyone say hi, YouTube. And then Moon gets to say hi. But if everyone doesn't say hi, YouTube, then Moon can't say hi. Who never says hi. <laughs> <laughs> She just doesn't get to talk the whole thing. She's just going to be sitting there the whole movie. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Forbidden. You can't say hi to Moon. What the fuck? Last time we did this tier list, a lot of you guys were pretty skeptical about what was going on. And some of you felt like the S plus tier in particular was just not okay. Uh, and then we also <laughs> talked about, you know, like obviously some of you can see the Sparkle is here now. She's a brand new character. And so a lot of you were trying to, you know, Sparkle is going to be an S plus. I disagreed. I still disagree. But we can talk about that. I wanted to have some other opinions on why I'm going to say what I'm going to say and just give everybody the floor to be able to talk about that. So the way that I'm going to break this down, we'll go through all of S plus, then we'll go through all of S and then so on and so forth. Right. And then we'll just kind of keep it pushing from there. If this video turns out to be an hour long, hey, listen, you signed up for this. OK, Back. this is like this is right now is your time to leave. You you can't leave. <laughs> you're not allowed to leave i want you to die i said that <laughs> yeah like i said that just kind of like i'm being nice right like hey you want some food you want a bite but i'm really not going to give you a bite i just want to let you know that right now going into s plus territory daniel is the new character in s plus how we feeling i think honestly like he deserves it i think now with the with sparkle being in the game 100 his weaknesses which is the main thing a lot of people are talking about which is a quote-unquote problem his weaknesses are now being filled in now he doesn't have something that's holding him back for what power he's able to dish out with his three skill point uh move and now that sparkles in the game giving him constant three skill point moves every single time he's on the field not having to like micromanage whatever you're doing on the team he just gets to do the damage he wants for free and yeah. i think with him having no weaknesses anymore with sparkle being in the game and all the other sp positive characters we have in the game what right now doesn't make him almost a perfect character yeah okay i could definitely see that uh and then moon i want your opinion too there's also i want to know sarah's opinion as well so sarah if you're still in here i want to kind of be to type it out and then uh <laughs> let me know that too because sarah has an interesting interesting take that i want to go over but moon what do you feel honestly uh i'm gonna have to practice my sans voice throughout this but i think that um I think he's definitely worth the S plus now because of the fact that Sparkle did come in and it definitely helped with like his problem of the skill points. Like now it's not really as much of a problem at all because you just always have a good amount of skill points with her. And I also feel like because of the crit damage buff, it's definitely really good as well because he values crit value so much in this kit. So I feel like it's literally his partner in crime for like an ideal partner in my personal opinion, at least. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with a lot of that too. Um, it's kind of the easiest way to say it, right? A lot of you guys look at what I say in terms of why I don't agree or disagree uh, or, or do agree 
with placing Daniel in certain categories. Like I think the last time I talked about it, I said that Daniel would be an S tier just based off pure damage. But in terms of everything else about the character, the way you build him, uh, ease of use, everything like that, his, his team variety, if you will, I said that he was an A tier character. If I didn't say it, then I'm saying it now. But with the introduction of Sparkle as a character, Sparkle makes up for the fact that with Bronya in particular, you had to play Daniel a certain way, which typically was going to be, you know, basic attack once or like one one X basic attack. Uh, and then Bronya boosts you up after every other character goes, gives you the skill points, and then you can use three. So you were pretty much using one normal basic attack and then one enhanced basic attack every rotation. And you might have been able to go like four times in one cycle, right? But only two of those times were enhanced basic attacks. Obviously, there are going to be some different teams, like if you include Hanya in the mix and Hanya super fast, you're able to get that off so that you can get uh, three enhanced basic attacks instead of just two. And that does help Daniel out. But now with Sparkle, not only is Sparkle bringing in guaranteed enhanced basic attacks every single time, but she's also bringing in a stupid amount of crit damage on top of what he already has. And she brings damage boost to carry that forward. So with a character like Sparkle, you can actually, and then I think Daniel gives himself his own imaginary Ooh. damage bonus, right? Like he gives- Oh him, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now you can just completely get rid of the imaginary damage orb and give yourself more attack. Now you can reach 4,000 attack with Daniel. You also don't need speed boots. You don't care about the 134 speed point. You want no speed. So now you can give him attack boots. You can give him attack percent rope. You don't care about the energy region um, because you might have Ting Yun on the team. Or in some cases, you can now replace Ting Yun with Pela. You don't really need to, but you can. So no matter how you build this Daniel team at this point, Sparkle is pivotal. Sparkle is now glued to Daniel the same way that uh, Ting Yun would have been glued to Jing Yuan for a long time, if not still to this day. And it works. It's fine. It completes him as a unit, as a core, as a synergy. And now we can say Daniel has a team synergy uh, that is unique to him and, you know, serves the purpose of giving him everything that he wants to do and everything that Sparkle wants to achieve on the team. Yes, this is a future thing that's coming out in the team video. I'm making a new one, um, as I said I would do. So we're kind of here with that. But ultimately, I do agree with Daniel's placement getting brought up to S+. Plus. Now, Sarah. What were you saying <laughs> about Daniel and that because I, I know you mentioned that you think Zila and Ratio should have been up here before him. And I want to know your reason as to why uh, you had that on lock. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Ready face. to go. Dill Sparkle. Uh, let me see if I can. I know I can't show that there because you guys are typing up a storm now. Damn, y'all. Y'all completely moved her thing out of the way. Now I have, I'm going to have to pull it out of the out of the editing and then bring it up but deal sparkle allows him to run attack boots the biggest bonus to him with sparkle but his clears did not improve at the top they became comfier with sparkle not better he is in my opinion for a general tier uh generalist s tier with ratio and zila because of the ease of use but jing liu is still better with poverty supports so in my opinion either daniel goes to s tier or zila and ratio are in s plus either way it's fine also best deal comp is still ting yun ron mayo for sparkle because Ting Yun is just SP positive as Sparkle. Sparkle just allows attack percent uh, boots, which are easier. Okay, so if that's the case and nothing really changed about Daniel, I think that would be worth digging into, right? I'm not gonna be the one to tell you that I can do that because I don't I don't build <laughs> my Daniel as it is. Maybe somebody else in the comment section or in the Twitch chat would be able to do that. But ultimately I do see, I can see where you're coming from with that. The reason I can't say that uh, Zila and Ratio would go into S plus now is because they don't bring to the table what Jing Liu brings to the table. Like maybe ratio, like maybe we could, we, we could probably make an argument for ratio, but that argument would have to have E1, S1, Topaz in mind. I don't see it happening with any other team comp or any like if you add Pela and, you know, Bronner or something like that. I don't see that happening with ratio in particular because now you're adding much more to the table than you would if you just included E1, S1. And that's already a lot. Ratio by himself, I don't think matches Jing Liu. And I don't think Zila matches Jing Liu in to, terms to of what. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say um, if we're going by what Sarah's, which honestly I can I can honestly see as well, because um, everyone's gonna have their own pers uh, perspective and their own opinion. But if we're going with what she's saying, where Jing Liu clears even with the most like basic of supports, then I think at that point Jing Liu will just forever stay in S plus by herself. Yeah. Like if we're gonna be uh, putting the ease of use in regards to any support we throw at them then Jing Liu by far just has but you might as well put s plus 
another tier between those two? Like S minus or something? <laughs> or not S minus, but S. No, S you're right. S minus, like yeah. Or yeah, S minus. Wouldn't it be S minus? No, well, no okay, so S would be minus S would be below plus. S. Okay, so it'd be S plus, right? That'd yeah, be Jing then... Liu. You'd have a tier empty, and then you'd have everyone else shift it down because if we're going by like the most basic of supports and throwing them onto a DPS, Jing Liu evaporates everyone else on this tier list in terms of being a yeah. DPS because she gives herself literally everything she would ever want to herself and then being sp efficient as well which is absolutely brain dead mm -hmm. so yeah I, she would just be by herself at that point if we're going by not their best scenario but how easy it is to make them usable yeah okay you know what i okay so now now i'm understanding more about where sarah is going with that mm -hmm. so yeah. i could i could i could also agree like okay you would probably still keep jing Liu in her own tier because of that reason mm -hmm. she doesn't need like how okay now that we're saying like okay Daniel needs Sparkle to be an yeah. S plus, right? Because he wasn't here before. Jing Liu yeah. did not need anyone yeah. in order to be an S plus. Now that no I hear friend. that out loud, I actually yeah. have to agree with like, okay, you know what? That's crazy because I was not prepared to agree with that. And I know they're going to be like, oh my God, he's only doing that because he hates Daniel. This fucker right here, bro. I can't stand yeah. that motherfucker right there, bro. Sarah, he I'm hates the Magic Dragon. <laughs> Sarah, if I'm not wrong, that was what you were going with, right? Because I'm assuming that's what you were saying because if that was the case and i hunt i think at this point everyone agrees like there's no way anyone cannot see that being true with how insane jing Liu is what she gives herself you know what's funny is because we're, we're moving down the list now right that's mm -hmm. the exact same reason that i have with may being where she is and not sparkle joining her so now that i say that out loud i'm like yeah it, it makes way more sense that i wouldn't want daniel there either it makes me like a hypocrite because i'm about to say the exact same shit for sparkle but I'm justifying it for Daniel. So it makes more sense. Um, and we've already talked about Jing Liu. There's no reason for her to not be an S+. Uh, I don't think we have to revisit Kafka in terms of being in here, especially knowing what's coming in the future with uh, Acheron. I do believe that Kafka is just 100% going to stay up there in S+. Plus yeah. Because of what, yeah. like, she's just that character, right? And I see, yeah. <laughs> we talked about it earlier with the specialist mm -hmm. here and how specialists were just like, oh, that's still just DPS. And I'm like, not for everyone. And in Kafka's case, I think the reason that she's in a specialist versus just a damage dealer is because she applies the debuffs. She can run different, uh, different relic sets if she needed enabler. to. Yeah, she's an enabler, if you will. She can still do her own damage. She can add the debuffs if she needs to. She can enable somebody else to do their own damage, like Swan, for instance. She works in a follow-up team with Topaz, which is something that a lot of people are like, I wouldn't do that. But Kafka has a direct follow-up attack to whatever it is that you're doing that it, it goes hand in hand with topaz so if you want to trigger numbies as often as possible you could do that with a fast topaz and kafka so she has those options so i feel like yeah kafka deserves to be in the s plus category for the specialist class um because she's a mix of everything yeah and kafka can do hyper carry she doesn't need anyone else so i feel like that's valid too ruan may we talk about her all the time in my opinion she's the best character in the game but let's jump into sparkle Oh, now <laughs> yeah i'm gonna leave this one real quick because the same thing that we just said about daniel and why why sarah doesn't agree and now that rihu kind of explained it i also have to agree with that daniel is still an, a phenomenal character and personally barney if you're in here i think if you were to make the uh if you guys were to make the tier list s plus s and then s minus like something just in between so if s was in between obviously the three tiers right or even made an A plus category. Cause I do think now, I think now it's time instead of an S minus, you guys need an A plus category. There are certain characters that are like, they're good, but they're not S tier because they don't do everything that an S tier character would do with absolute ease. I think an A plus category would be a lot better because now you can put characters like, and I'm not saying that Jing Yuen is A, a plus because I don't like Jing <laughs> or something like that. I'm just saying Jing Yuen and QQ, if you want A plus, whereas like, they have the potential to be S tier or even S plus, but they require a lot more than a character like Zila or Ratio who don't require that. And they can just jump into S plus depending on the team, right? Without a team, these characters are S tier. With a team, they have the potential to jump up to S plus category. And I think Daniel fits right there. So I do agree that Daniel, Ratio, and Zila should be in the same categories. Sparkle does not have the same impact that May has, uh, that May does. May is a character that when she is, and I told y'all before she came out, people didn't want, they didn't want to listen to me. May came out and she completely, like there's no other character in the game that can say when I release, when my banner released, I completely changed the meta. 
Yeah. I made characters that were dog shit good. No <laughs> other character in the game can say that. I created not one, two different team types or two different comps that can be ran just from existing on the team. And I boost everybody by just existing on the team. I don't even have to skill. We have May builds now where you start the game with technique and you never do skill again. You're done. Yeah, that, that's, that's it, me. right? Yeah, like you're done. Me. You don't have to worry about that at all. Um, I, I guess you could say Kafka, but I don't think Kafka changed the meta because like an impact, right? Kafka added a team comp. She added DOT, like a, a successful or complete DOT type. But I don't want to say she completely changed the meta. Black Swan, yeah. maybe, but that that's another question that I would I would really have to think about that. But it's not to the same, like, because I have to think about it, that's why I say it's not the same impact as May. I don't have to think. May, May is 100% came into the game immediate. It's like, boom, we're here now, awesome. So I think that's why that's there. I do believe, and I say this all the time, Sparkle and Branya are the same coin, right? Sparkle, mm -hmm. S tier, Branya, S tier, just two sides of the same coin. That's really all it is. Sparkle's impact is great. It's phenomenal. It's awesome. She She's able to bring up characters and do stupid shit. Uh, like the, the hyper carrier, the unlimited blade works. I love that fucking team name. But, you know, <laughs> you guys are able to come up with these crazy ass teams. But these teams aren't necessarily anything that I won't say that we couldn't do before. You're just mega buffing the shit out of the one DPS character, right? So unlimited blade works. We're just mega buffing blade. You were already hyper buffing blade. Now you're mega buffing blade. It's the same shit. She's not doing anything that's so critical, so different than uh, or in comparison to May that would put her in the same tier. But let me know you guys, how do y'all feel about Sparkle being an S plus or S tier? Like what, what's the thoughts on that? I'm like, Destiny go first. Cause I went first last time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, honestly, it's really hard for me to say because even when like I did the video, I kept going like, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like I really <laughs> didn't know because it's like, I don't think she's made tier. I'll say that. But I feel like, and I said it, and I, I still kind of feel this way. I feel like it depends on the team if she's like in between that S plus and S, or if she's just outright S. But then I, um, someone mentioned it to me, which now that they mentioned it, I kind of agreed with it, is that um, they feel like Sparkle and Branya should be in the same tier because of how similar their skill kits are in some aspects. They basically mentioned that they feel like Sparkle and Branya should be the same tier because of the fact that they're like so similar in skill kit. So I feel like maybe Sparkle could be like, I mean, if there was somehow an in-between of S plus and S, maybe there, but I could see her maybe just it just really depends. I don't know. <laughs> like, sure. I still don't know. <laughs> so let me ask you, why do you think May or not May? What's Sparkle. keeping you from having Branya and Sparkle on the same tier? Like, why do you think Sparkle is just a slight edge over uh, over uh, Branya? Yeah, because if okay. they, if we were going to add the tier, we wouldn't add one in between S, S plus and S. We would add an okay. A plus. And that so, means that you would say like, OK, Sparkle is S, Branya is mm -hmm. A plus. Right. Okay, um, I personally like Sparkle more, so... Okay, why, <laughs> though? You can like, you know, I think okay, Sparkle's no, a great character. I love Sparkle's Sparkle's cool. Cool. <laughs> I'm about to explain it. So, the skill point thing, I feel like, is a really, really nice thing that maybe not enough people are talking about too, too much. Mm -hmm. Like, even in points that, even, oh my god, in points? Okay, even in teams that are, like, super skill point, like, not positive, but let's say, like, their normal skill point usage. I like the fact that let's say I did have Ting Yun on the team, I can like skill spam with Ting Yun now freely and get her ult so much faster yeah. and just abuse the fact that I have all these skill points laying around. And then like with her talent and just using up those points with the damage increases and stuff, I feel like I just personally like that play style more. Not to say I don't like Branya by any means. I love Branya as well. Did I just call her Branya or did I say Brawny? I don't know. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> I like both of them. I personally just like Sparkle more. I don't know. That's just me, though. I feel like you just uh, said, <laughs> like, you yeah, elaborated, no, like, it, I like Sparkle more. Here's why. <laughs> the reason why is that okay, I like Sparkle more. Okay, you know more. what? You know what? Okay, you don't, you don't have to, like, overextend it. No, no, no. no I, I understand. Okay. <laughs> My I understand bad. it. I'm sorry. Just, I thought that was funny. Um, 
but yeah i i mean yeah and then chat saying like spark was comfier which i agree with but i also think that uh -oh. like speed tuning for sparkle is way more annoying than with Branya. and i guess oh, the I makeup agree. for yeah like you, you make up for doing that by like okay you get an abundance of skill points and then you know some other stuff but that's kind of why i said the two sides of the same coin thing right where a lot of those characters that would appreciate the extra skill points and the huge boost and like attack percent boots uh plus the the speed tuning in particular like it's not really a big deal the other half with those characters that don't really care Branya takes care of so i'm like they they equally you know like boost the yeah. entire dps roster but yeah. rihu let I me have, oh i have one more point i'm sorry yeah go ahead I, I also like the fact that with sparkle you can swap a lot of your dps's to attack boots yeah like I, I personally just like the damage that you could get out of that. I mean, wouldn't you do that with Branya too, though, without the speed tuning? I had never put speed boots on my DPS. You know what? <laughs> I haven't thought about that because the thing is, when I play Branya, I do like DPS one speed faster than yeah. her. Her right behind them, and I'm like, I can't do this if my Branya is super slow. Yeah, I feel you. Okay, so is it my turn? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. So for me. Uh, like instead instead of dancing around it like destiny was just doing <laughs> hey man <laughs> um i straight up just don't believe that anyone should be anywhere near ruan may yeah um ruan may and this has been something not only i've thought but also something that i've seen other people comment and say as well is that when ruan may is not on the team when you're playing on the other side of uh moc pure fiction whatever it is the team doesn't feel right anymore. Bro, that as damage difference is crazy. Ruan May, <laughs> <laughs> May quite literally makes the team feel off if she's not on the um, yeah. team. And it's just something that you notice if you have her. If you don't have her, uh, you will literally have a crazy difference in how you see teams look and how they feel and how much damage you're outputting and how many like breaks you're getting off, how much of the toughness is being erased at the same time. Like when you see something like how Don Hung or Jin Yuen are able to like get at least 70% of the toughness bar of a boss taken away because of Ruan Mei, that stuff you notice. And, and she has like stats or a buff that no one else has in the game still which is weakness break efficiency. That is by far still one of the most broken things in the game. And she's popping people for like 60, 70K just for breaking them. With no matter how you do it, they're broken. They're getting hit for 70K with yep, the yep, yep. really nice, good Ruan Mei. And let's not talk about the sub DPS getting pushed all the way into the forefront with her coming in. How dot teams are literally erasing things as they take their turn. I, yeah. I just don't think no one in terms of support or debuffing or anything in this game compares to what Ruan May did when she released or how she feels on different teams. I would definitely put Sparkle in S tier with Bronya. I think they're linked, in my honest opinion, wherever you put Sparkles, wherever you put Bronya. As EO said already, they're kind of like the different sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. One does something a little bit better than the other, and the other one does the inverse. They do something else that the other person um, that lacks a tiny bit, they make up for it in theirs. So I do think those two should be like locked with, with each other because they are so similar. Um, but Ruan Mei is just, you pop her on any team and she's broken. Yes, <laughs> that, that character is doing what they need to do as long as she's on the team. Like So I definitely believe that she needs to be there by herself. <laughs> for I sure. agree with that and too. Then, yeah. yeah, it's not... um. So we are, at least I am taking into consideration that, you know, the decent builds or like uh, the ideal build is placed on these characters when I talk about these things or discuss where their potential lies. But what I am looking at is the ease of that build. A lot of players, and this was something that I even told, um, because Grim and I were talking about this when, before she came out and we were mentioning like how, how much speed you want it with Sparkle in order to get something done. And in my guide, I mentioned that, okay, like if you're not hitting 161, like call it a wrap, you know what I mean? Like you can <laughs> you can use any other speed formula or any other speed number and it's fine. You're gonna get what you want out of it, but like 161 is a sweet spot. So now you have, I'm not doing 174, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> 161 and that's all you're getting. <laughs> yeah, but like, so the thing is that now you have, uh, how do I achieve that? How do I get so much speed on this one character and then make up for it in all the other departments with whoever I'm trying to build it? 
And so, yeah, no, Smack did do like a 134 sparkle. And I'm not saying that 134 sparkle doesn't work. What I'm saying is when you're when you're using this character and I have to do one, two, three, four, and then make everything fit around one, two, three, four versus another character, it doesn't matter how I built them, just put them on the team, right? Like Bron, just put her on the team, boom, you're done. May just exist. Put her on the team and you're done. There's nothing else that I have to worry about besides that. 134 or like neg, neg one speed sparkle requires a lot more shit than 161 speed sparkle. 161 speed sparkle, you're done. I don't I don't need DDD. I don't need a, a new fucking light cone. I can run all nine harmony light cones in the game and I will do exactly what my sparkle wants her to do with the added uh, light cone bonus on top of that. 134 sparkle, I need to have DDD. I need to have my characters at 135 or, or zero, which is impossible. They can't be too fast or I'm gonna waste the advanced forward that sparkle would bring to the table. There's a lot more that goes into sparkle needing to have um, all this stuff. And like Sarah said, you have to clear this within a certain cycle. Otherwise you go out of sync. Mind you, you're not using 134 speed sparkle with Zila because what ends up happening is Zila is going to go. She's going to advance herself forward because of her. Her uh, skill has a 25% boost of speed, whatever the fuck. And then she's got to use basic attacks at any point in that. She's auto advancing herself forward. Sparkle has to play keep up with that. If your Sparkle is 135 or 134, your Zila automatically outspeeds Sparkle. It, it is what it is. Now you have to make Sparkle catch up with Zila. And it's a lot. So when you see these players doing this stuff with sparkle notice they're not playing with zila and if they are there's a bunch of other shit on the team that makes up for it you need nine copies of of an s5 dance 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 you need your characters to have the von quack set up you need all three harmony characters on the team you need the ultimate to pop at this time there's a lot more that goes into making sparkle work outside of a standard 161 and the 161 is a problem in itself because that's a lot of fucking speed like, like yeah, yeah i could i could rainbow build <laughs> yeah. her and get the speed but that's not ideal so when we're talking about the ideal build i'm gonna have a two-piece two-piece or a full four piece or a broken kill or pinnacone depending on if i'm running uh mono quantum or not something like that right that's not easy and then if i go into like the wind set no one's farming fucking wind set i'm definitely not going back <laughs> to farm wind set for 161 even though that's oh like God. technically her best build i'm not going back to do that shit. so what do you mean you're not going to farm for Yun Ching? No way, bro. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I'm not doing that, you know? But like, if I could, right? If I just had the pieces for the win set to hit 161, I promise you I'd be using it. But I don't. And it's going to take like every character in my account has to be built. And we got to go through a dead patch. Then I'll go farm the win set. And, and by that point, I may or may not still be using Sparkle. But ultimately there's a massive difference between the work required the effort to use sparkle at 161 versus anything else anything higher than 161 you're obviously you're doing a lot better but you know it's just it's hard so when i look at that from a perspective of how easy is this to achieve for the average player it's not lucky players have a 160 plus speed cap most average or casual players do not have that and so when you tell them, yeah, bro, Sparkle's better than May. Sparkle's top tier. She's this, that, and the third. She does all this shit. Okay, cool. How do I do that? You need S5 dance, dance, dance times two. You need this, you need this, you need this, you need this. And then your Sparkle needs to be minus one speed on top of your DPS character. But run attack boots. I don't have that. Like, <laughs> casual players don't have this shit. So we can't say she's, like, as easy to build as May. You just put May yeah. on the team and you're done. Like, I don't, it doesn't care, man. Bro, I don't have 180% break effect on my May. Genuinely, I probably don't care. Are they broken? No. Yeah, they're dead. <laughs> they're, de they're dead. They, they didn't get a turn to attack me. They're dead. GG's. Sparkle, hey, I'm going to advance you forward. Cool. I'm trying to zero cycle though. Yeah, don't worry about it, bro. I'm, I'm going to advance you forward. Miss Sparkle, <laughs> I'm right beneath the 29. You advanced me forward to the start of the next cycle. I can't get oh over. My God, I can't get I over. Can't what happened? So oh shit. Much. My oh, bad, God. Mr. DPS. Your speed and my speed fucked up the action values, so I couldn't bring you over the next cycle. I hate that so freaking much. When you use their advanced four, and it's like, oh, I'm gonna just every save time. Cycle. Every <laughs> right? time, bro. Every time. So and annoying. it it's a speed thing, right? Like there's a way to get 50% turning into hundred percent all the time, but it requires speed tuning. You don't have to deal with that. Um 
with some of the other characters like the 161 thing and whatnot so it is what it is but ultimately no go ahead what were you gonna say i i was gonna say i guess like seeing both of those perspectives i guess i can agree like putting her in s mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's just it, there's, there's so much more effort and i think that's the difference of like my s tier or my s plus kafka yeah. doesn't require a lot of effort to do exactly what she wants to do i could build a scuff kafka and she's still gonna get the, the job done uh may same shit push win i could put every single rainbow piece possible on her and she's still gonna sustain the team Jing Liu, Jing Liu, obviously I'm not going to put rainbow pieces on her, but Jing Liu works in a way that, you know, I build her once, I'm done. That's it. Crit rate, I don't need a crit rate body piece. I just need 50% or 30, even, not even that. I need like, what, 39% or something yeah, like that? Or, like, yeah, like you need a, a low amount of crit rate and she's going to boost herself up to 100%. You stack crit damage on top of her and then attack percent and she's done. GG's, you know, you have everything you need. But that would be what I dictate like some S pluses. Now, if we go into the S tier, Oh Lord, this is gonna be. We it's already talked be, about ratio and Zila. <laughs> yeah. We talked about ratio and Zila, so I feel like we can skip those for now, unless you guys have something to say over those characters. But I really want to look at Jing Yuan. Um, I think those two. Can, <laughs> uh, okay, ratio. He can. He can, he has an extended stay at S for now. Okay, but sell it. I don't know. I've oh seen yeah, that's right. We were talking about that before. For sell it. Personally, I already know people finna start typing, but <laughs> it, it, I see people clearing. I see people doing work with her still, which I'm so happy for because she's still by far one of my favorite characters in the game for sure. I just don't think right now, even though I am seeing what I am seeing, that she matches up to these units in S. And I'm I'm gonna just skip really quickly. I, we're probably gonna talk about her later, but she and Ching Chui need to get put down. I, so let me ask you if if i could somehow convince barney to convince the team to make an a plus tier would you say zila is the first Ella one that, is yep a plus okay yes, okay 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 i just wanted I to be on the same Sarah. page with that i know sarah's <laughs> about to say what are you saying she's like but she's yeah. the only one that can zero cycle it's like i don't know what crack y'all give your sell it but for me and like other people that I know do have Sela, they are not hitting these 100k skills like y'all are. I'm like, where are y'all getting these numbers from? EO's over here spending 900 retries trying to make her do a two cycle or something or one yeah. cycle. Yeah, and, well, I can get the like, two cycle. I wanted to kill the, uh, the, the searing robot or whatever his name is. Uh -huh. I wanted to one shot him with the ult. And it was, it was, it's so, eventually you guys will see that video, but it's so annoying because the the one shot that happens i need like 300k and so my zila would hit like 250 279 and i'm like bro how do i do it mind you i'm not using sparkle boost it's just silver wolf and then zila's damage and i'm able to output 200 a high 200,000, right but when i give her the sparkle boost i get the 300k the problem was trying to figure out how to get the sparkle boost and put the quantum weakness on them and all this other kind of stuff so it is what it is but i i do agree with you on that uh to an extent now i will say i don't think i would put zila in a plus i think i would only put qq and jing in an a plus i would leave zila ratio and dill pickle in s tier and the reason i say that is because yeah zila still does zero cycles i try not to to say like zero cycle is like a, a the epitome of like what i'm gonna count but in zila's case she's still a, a cracked up character and her problem isn't her it's the game the game is becoming harder That's for her to get the yeah like the mob kills like i don't know what hsr devs are on but they are purposely <laughs> bro i did an ultimate on a mob and it lived bro. i'm like that's not supposed to happen like why did you have more than 40 50 70 thousand hp as They're a mob feeding those mobs like premium food at bro the point. mobs are eating fucking medicine and rare candies from pokemon i don't know what's oh going on gosh. but like they should not have that much hp and defense stats it's crazy the fish you know the, the thing that explodes i skilled it and i saw the skill i'm boosted up sparkle boost and everything and it did like i think the the skill itself during the 50 percent boost or whatever it did like 50k the fish lives i'm like why do you have that much hp you should be dead there's no reason you should have more hp than this for what you don't even do uh 10 percent of that to the enemy when you explode it's dumb the the thing i was gonna say for Sela to like finish off what i wanted to say about her i think personally and i i would love to hear the rest of what y'all think about Sela. but for me it's, it's exactly what you said. It's not her that's the problem. It's these steroided out mobs that they're putting in MOC. And if 
the reason why I'm saying she would personally for me get put down to A plus is because if a mob is steroided out, we have the little fishy getting skilled and having 90% of his health back or something like that mm -hmm. with how much HP this dude has. These characters like Ratio, Jing Yuan, and I'm going to just say those two because I don't want Ching Chui and S either. Um, but these two characters, their kit doesn't get outright shut down for characters being tanky. They do the damage that they do and they still get to do it. While Sela has a resurgence, she has to get the kill for her to get her actual kit to work. Yeah. And for her to have the opportunity to not be guaranteed to use her actual kit puts me her down to eight plus, not because of how strong she is, but because these mobs are way too tanky at this point to reliably guarantee you're always going to get a resurgence off because that's what we based off her power before. And that's why she was S plus for so freaking long, yeah. because at the time where the mobs were squishy enough, she was tearing everything up. She was mm -hmm. one shot stealing. She was doing like nukes for ults, everything. She was able to get her full resurgence uh, chain and do like four enemies and kill them all at the same time. But now it's like the mobs are way too tanky at this point where they're surviving ults from characters. So that's the only reason why I would put her down slightly to A plus if they were to make that a tier. You want to hear a hot take? Go ahead. I think now is when we need to start looking at not hyper carry Zila teams, but literal dual DPS. Like, I think she is getting to the point where she wants or needs a sub DPS character to be able to weaken those mobs so that she can just guarantee trigger resurgence and then she can get the ball rolling on her own. That's what I'm feeling right now. Like, the problem is though, where Silver, for instance, Silver is definitely a character that, especially with Sparkle on the team, you could absolutely, I've been testing it out. You could run a sub DPS silver and get the damage and it, it works. Yo, Mike was popping big dog. How you doing? Um, you can get the damage from a sub DPS silver and they can weaken the, these mobs enough and apply the defense downs and, and uh, quantum quantum weaknesses that Zila can take care of them. But you need a fast ass silver. Like silver <laughs> needs to be 160, 170. So that goes back into the sparkle scenario where you got to have her pretty damn fast. So it's, but I, I will say that I have enjoyed playing the uh, Mono Quantum team because for with sure, Sparkle, sure. yeah, like I'm able to, like sometimes I'm like, all right, you know, Zila is like a turn away, right? I'm going to pull up Silver Wolf and weaken the enemy so that I can guarantee resurgence. Or I'm going to pull up Silver and then get my ult faster so that I could hit the, the enemy or ultimate uh, elite or whatever and then KO him with the ultimate. So I, I like stuff like that. Destiny, did you you didn't go for? We're not even supposed to be talking about it. We're supposed to be talking about GUN. <laughs> Wait, no way, really? Yeah. No. I guess I guess what you guys said. I I did say that if you had something to say about Zeller or Ratio. Oh then, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. God. But I was like, no way. I got fully <laughs> off top. I was like, there's no way. Yeah, but um. Now we talk about Jingyuan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we can go into Jingyuan unless. Destiny, did you want to talk about Zeal or did you only want to talk about Jing Yuan? I think Zeal and Ratio are fine where they are. I mm -hmm. agree with the fact though that the game is like, I swear the game is giving these little goldfish like premium fish food because yeah. they're just like, nope, I'm not dying. But <laughs> regardless, aside from their um, premium, whatever they're getting fed, I, I still <laughs> think she's an F tier character. It just, it's at the end of the day, I feel like it's really high investment. And at the same time, it's uh, I, I think the game is just being mean to her right now. Actual fuck. Yeah. I next next patch, I swear. Next patch. No, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm reading what Sarah said. <laughs> Sarah's Sarah's uh, Sarah's bonkers right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the controversial takes, which is going to be these next two characters, literally back to back. Who? Jin Yuin and QQ. What do you? I don't. Mean? I don't think QQ is a hot take though. QQ uh, under the no, the it pretense, definitely is. Listen, listen. Is. Under the pretense that we make an A plus tier, which is what I'm really pushing for, bro. Like if we could just convince Barney to convince the team to do that, be great. But I'm I'm under the pretense that we make an A plus tier character or A plus tier. Mm -hmm. Jin Yuin and QQ going A plus tier and I'm explaining why. As no, I, okay, I think QQ I'm, is A plus because even I, though she has the damage of an S tier character, the fact, hard factor is is literally RNG. Not only do you need to 1, build this character, percent. yeah, the same way that you would build a Zila, you build a QQ. And then you still need the team to help you out with that. Now you include the sparkle mix. So now that goes into what we were talking about with Daniel. She needs someone else to help her achieve what she is trying to do or RNG which is like straight up luck. And you know, the I guess the proper way to play her, you wanna do her skill three times or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong, chat. You wanna do her skill three times before you get the pop or two skills. And then you get, you know, like the, oh, I got all four luckies, something like that. So you get the maximum boost from her skill being used. 
So something like that is not guaranteed. It's RNG. You can't have a character that's purely RNG in an S tier category. It's ridiculous to have something like that because of the RNG factor. And even if we hover over it, we can see if there is no RNG involved in MOC at E0, she's a B tier <laughs> character. In pure fiction, she's a C tier character. In uh, MOC E6 with RNG in mind, she's S tier. And then in pure fiction, she's B tier. It's things like that that I'm like, okay, putting her in A plus doesn't all of a sudden make this character like dog shit, for instance, okay, right? Okay, one thousand percent. I I want people to please preface that just because <laughs> we move people down a tier does not mean they're absolute dogs. They're like, typing right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know that emote where like it'll be like the Pepe that's typing on the keyboard. That's oh, what yeah. it is right now. Yeah. <laughs> and, and for wait, one thing I want to put before you get back to your point, just because I want to stop people before they type yeah, it you, out. I know that they're doing it. I know that they're going to do it. Please stop saying that you're guaranteed her little checkmate thing because we literally have proof yeah. that Poke you in 10 skill points and did not get it. I swear people have said in the comments you're guaranteed after a certain amount of skill points if you play a certain way. Mm -hmm. that, that that was just proven wrong, thankfully, because Pokey has trash look. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I saw that and I was like, yep, that, this is exactly what I was talking about. What Rihu talks about, like all of us that mentioned this, when we catch flack for it, I'm like, I'm not bashing QQ, but RNG is at the end of the day, RNG is still RNG, right? RNG. You know, if mm -hmm. I go and make a 10 pool right now in the game and I get lucky and I get whatever characters on the banner, right? A new, another sparkle, E1 sparkle off a random 10 pool, a random single, that's RNG. But if I don't and it takes me 89 pulls to get the one sparkle, that's RNG. Like, that's how QQ operates, which is why I've never agreed her being an S tier. But I, I never took away like her damn. I'm not gonna say never. Maybe I did, but I'm not doing it now. I don't take away her damage potential. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Yo, Unk. <laughs> you know, I don't take away her damage potential. It's just the means to get to said damage is what I'm like. Okay, there, there's a gate right here, and the gate is RNG. But if there was an A plus tier, I 100% think this character is like A plus from what we're pushing right now. A plus is the category where these characters have the potential to be an S tier, given one two three criteria without the criteria they're a plus and i think that's where qq and jing yuan sit but if we're talking about jing i think jing is in a position where sparkle definitely helps him out a lot to be fair but you know what no i can see yeah because bronya wasn't giving lightning lord the boost sparkle exactly gives yeah understand. sparkle gives lightning lord yeah. the boost now so i think that's still pretty big and jing yuan was already doing a crap ton of damage but that still falls under the same category for the same criteria. Jing Yuin at one point needed Ting Yuin and Asta and then Fu Xuin. That was a complete team, he, or Pela. He needed that in order to function the way that people were saying like, oh, Jing Yuin does the best damage in the game. He's he's the strongest character, blah, 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 blah. And he needs a signature light cone. He needs E2. Like there were so many different stipulations as to why people were saying Jing Yuin was cracked out. If we're looking at Jing Yuin from E0 as just a character, High key, genuine, probably like B or A tier. I'm, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. Wait, 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 please, wait. Say it again. I blinked. <laughs> okay, if well, I if heard we're it. looking at genuine as just himself, no one else. Okay, okay. He okay. is a B or A tier character. But when you add in like, okay, his ideal, you know, relic set or gear, when and you add in like, okay, is Ting Yun on the team? Yeah. Okay, now you start adding more than that. Now we have to add Sparkle, which again, same stipulation as before. You're adding things to make this character as strong as another character that's already in X tier. Ratio does not need Sparkle or Topaz for that matter, like an E1S1 Topaz, to do what Ratio wants to do. Ratio gonna blow up that fucking board. He's still gonna blow up the board <laughs> no matter what. Jing Yuin, on the other hand, Jing Yuin is not gonna blow up the board. He might weaken the board, and then that's Lightning crazy. Lord is gonna blow up the board. But Lightning Lord is like, mm, do I wanna hit the fish or do I wanna hit the elite boss? Do I wanna hit the second fish or the third fish? And now you have to play around with that. So if we remove Sparkle from this conversation, Jing Yuin would have stayed in A tier. Adding Sparkle should put Jing Yuin in A plus because it's just another necessity that he needs. Unless it, he doesn't kind, crit. Oh gosh. It, it's kind of weird <laughs> because like 100% like the reasoning of how you're putting him in a letter makes 100% mm -hmm. sense. But if I'm not wrong, we have to look at this in a way because it's not like there's two different tiers with overall versus like like optimal versus the character by itself right and if we're giving jing yu win his best of everything which is what we're supposed to do for this tier list i think realistically the 
power he's able to output now with the additions of like you know having like Ho Ho, having Ru and Mei, having Ting Yun. I think a lot of his problems really get like, you know how like if there's a hole you put like Flex Seal on it or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those, those characters <laughs> kind of do that for him. Like, yeah. Ruan may being able to boost his weakness break efficiency and him being able to have the massive amount of damage that he does by himself now currently, especially with the addition of the follow-up set. Um, and then adding Sparkle onto it, which finally his Lightning Lord is able to get boosted up even more because Broyan's buff expired after his turn. I I feel like his problems that were problems, although yes, he still does have them, I feel like they're not as big anymore because these guys aren't going to be CCing you if their shields are broken or right. if they're dead already. So... I don't know, it's weird because realistically if we look at him by himself, yes, he would be down in B or A. I most likely A. But if we're giving him everything that he wants, I personally would keep him at S. I personally would keep him there. I can see I can see where you're coming from with that. Do I agree? Probably not, but I definitely see it. <laughs> you know. Definitely see it. I don't know, it's hard. He's always the hard character to put because he's like he's doing what he needs to do and uh -huh. he's doing it very uh -huh. well. But he has all these Stipulations. Like obstacles yeah. that are in his way. So it's like he's up there with the damage ceiling, which is enormously high. But the stuff that's like a problem brings that down a little bit. So he's always in a very like volatile state and where he's at in the tier list. Just because all these other units, they don't do as much, I would say, as him. Because yes, he has some crazy damage, but they no have nowhere near the amount of problems this dude has. Yeah said sarah you said if his uh, his best in slot with the sustain is still ting yun and may sparkle just buffs his zero cycle triple support team if he is s or vol's s which means argenti is s <laughs> ting yun is a serval and argenti are a i respect that like i think you and i are in the same boat with that but it's equating hard, it to man. what yeah equating it to what rihu said is definitely harder to say it and it's only because of jingy win because jingy win is the only character that i feel like requires so much from everyone else in the game just to put him in this tier Verse, and that, that's why I was telling you about like, you know, adding Sparkle, I feel like he would mm -hmm. go in A plus because no one else in the game needs five different fucking characters yeah. to solve <laughs> their kit's problem. It's just like one, right? Maybe two, mm -hmm. depending on who you ask. Jing Liu needs no one. Daniel needed Sparkle and he got it. Thank you for the follow. Ratio needs someone to debuff. And to be honest, two characters do all the debuffs by themselves that he doesn't need another character. Silver and Topaz, he's chilling, he's good. Zila, Zila can play with whoever the fuck she wants. Like, keep it a buck. So, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Jing Yuen needs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different things in order to make him function at the same level of these other characters. That's why I personally feel like he mm -hmm. wouldn't go in the S tier, but I see the argument being made here. Yeah, it's it's either way that each way you look at, like, he can be there, but he also can't. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, it's hard. What do you got for us, Destiny? Honestly, at this I thought you were point, gone. I don't, I don't. Me too. What? I thought you were gone. You took so long to respond. I thought you were gone because I. What's funny was I was gonna be like, "Oh my god, you yap so much," but then you didn't respond. So I was like, "Oh, she's asleep." But you know, you're here. No, now. I'm here. I, I had a feeling you would do that though. But um, I kind of more so agree with Rihu on it. Like if, because I'm pretty sure this is the, like when they do the list, it's like a more optimal scenario. It's not like the characters by themselves personally yeah or why'd i say personally like i'm one of the characters <laughs> <laughs> it's not like the characters by themselves so this is the assumption that you know they're with a good team so like i feel like right now he can potentially be in that s tier the lowest i would probably put him is an a tier but if we did make like it's the a plus then that is like the lowest i'd probably put him yeah i gotta agree yeah i see keys why Just do you think that yeah, he is going. You can type it out and I'll read it. But why do you why do you just like why do you think Sparkle makes him so much more like he just feels so much better to play? I feel I feel like that is depending on the count for the most part, but definitely I would have to say the same me personally. I feel I feel playing Jing Yuen is a lot more comfortable with Sparkle just because yeah. having the extra skill points because Jing Yuen like he is not like a want. It's a need to scale yeah. every single turn. Yeah. And if you have someone like Bronya who also needs to uh skill every turn to give Jing Yuen the boost and then you have your sustain say so you got hit hard oh now i gotta heal you so there's a skill there you gotta do ting Yun skill every three to two turns i forgot which one it is so it eventually catches up to you in the worst scenarios and then now oh i can't skill with bronya oh i can't skill with Jing yeah. Yuen, and the team starts falling so apart. so would we say that 
sparkle boosting genuine enlightening lord is better than me no <laughs> so if if the no. standard like... team is like sparkle and ting yun jing yun and then like kushwin right wouldn't we just replace sparkle with me and if that's the I'm case gonna lie. i've seen so many people like i've been watching some people's showcases they have been outright just removing the sustain it's yeah, like yeah, sparkle that, that's, what, that's what sarah was saying team. yeah so that's what sarah was saying she was saying like it's a triple dps team at that or triple support yeah. team at that point um because of like xyz factor which is i mean that's fine we do that with other characters too like you know daniel is able to do that because of how strong he is um jingle you if you're zero cycling she could do that i do it with Kafka all the time so it's definitely possible i don't want to take that away from um jingle win either but i think I don't the problem know. no go ahead oh no i was gonna say really quickly I'm, I'm sorry but i was gonna say that like i don't know it just feels like a lot of people are moving away from a sustain like although these guys are like they hit hard, but if like we have three of the like strongest supports in the game, we're like a mix of them because we have such great support characters in the game, really good debuffers. I've seen a lot of people really just ditch it, me including. I don't even use sustains that much anymore because like we have so many good supports that can now fill up both teams yep. and we're putting so much damage out that we don't have to worry about getting hit because they're already dead before we even get to um, get hit from those people or they're broken and now Ruin May delays them into next year. So yeah. like there's like 80,000 ways that people are just circumventing needing to use a sustain that a lot of people are just straight up making meta teams of just three uh, supports at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I definitely remember agree with that. I remember back in the day in 1.0 when we had to double sustain. <laughs> Is there fire MC? He was, man. Oh my gosh. I was like, how fire. do you clear MOC? Fire MC <laughs> double sustain him up, bro. Oh, that's how you know you're old in this game. If you remember, <laughs> you're day you remember one. double sustain days. <laughs> if you remember double sustain was the meta. That was oh I can't go gosh. without sustain. I feel you on that, but gosh. That was straight up the only way I remember in the beginning to get to ten. And I'm like, holy crap, I can't beat this. Like you I were a pro was. if you only used one. You were a pro if you only used one. Right. Supplies. You had Japarta Bailu, you were set. <laughs> I think that's uh my day. Oh, no, we got a couple different <laughs> We don't have too many changes after that. Everyone else kind of stayed nah, the same. There's not many. I, I, okay, I have a real quick hot take. Mm -hmm. two, two takes, actually. I have a take as well. Two takes. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, are you copying me? Mm. Back in my day. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. You guys were saying that Xing Shui should be lower. So, I'm not going to lie. I feel like it, it's so dependent on your personal experience playing her. Because you guys have seen me you play her. That. I know, I know, I know, I completely understand that. But I don't know. For me, like, I really want to know what's the odd of you, or like, what's the odds of you not getting that final tile? Is there, has anyone ever done that? Okay. Like, a sheet of what the actual <laughs> odd is? No, because there's no odd to doing it. Like, you can't. No, there, I'm pretty sure there should be like there, no there because be an odd, what, what I feel they, like. okay listen what the QQ main said was that like hypothetically is that you know after four times you're guaranteed to get it which is not the case and many people have proven that before Poke's mm -hmm. video going like 10 deep the problem mm -hmm. is it's just like if you were to do a single pool every single time right like it's it's the same coin flip the same chance of you getting it is basically a 50 50 you want to get into really specifics it's it could be like a 33 33 or some shit like that but it's mm -hmm. not something where like oh if you reach 15 skill points for instance you're guaranteed on the 16th turn no you're still flipping the coin at the end of the day but because i guess the commonality behind it is like oh i've never flipped all five and gotten nothing from it so it has to be guaranteed I after the know. fifth that's how they they calculate that right because otherwise there's nothing in the game that says you know uh after x amount of thing you get guaranteed. x percent you know mm -hmm. towards gaining a watch uh a whatever the only thing that's guaranteed to get the four lucky flips is the ultimate or uh whatever mm -hmm. else it is so it's it just it's kind of there but that's a big right. reason why i'm saying like that rng factor is too it's too dominant to ignore when it comes to trying to figure out where that character goes. That, that, I guess so, yeah. Like, I feel like when I said, like, based on your personal experience, I don't mean, like, personal experience of, like, the people who make the tier list should base it on their experience, but rather, no, no, like... No, you meant, like, them like, playing. To me, she, like, yeah, to me, to she team. could be <laughs> S tier. To you, she might be D tier because you never get the matching tile. Right, like, yeah, it, no, that's what I'm saying. At that point, it's your that. personal opinion of, like, 
okay, this is how the RNG has been to me. So <laughs> this is how I feel. Yeah, but yeah. No, I, I feel you. like she's one of those characters you kind of got to rank her like that and like your own personal ranking because the thing is with her, like she's definitely strong. I don't think anyone is denying that. Like she no, can 100. do a bunch of damage, assuming that. Let me, let me ask you, know, you, you get question. lucky. Why? Why yeah. you didn't say this during the time period where I asked you if you had more to say about QQ? Why because didn't you, you cut me off and we immediately went into Jingyu N. No, I I no, didn't you cut. You straight up cut me off. I don't recall that chat. Did I you, cut her off when she was talking about QQ? I'm pretty oh. sure. Yeah, what you did was, oh, let's go into Jing Yuen now. And I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. I don't get to speak on QQ, I guess. I think we, we went from Ella to Jing Yuen. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Q. Like, because I, I spoke about QQ first, and then I asked Rihu about it. And we were talking about QQ when I mentioned the ape. You said yes, chat, not. Nah. Everyone that said yes is banned. <laughs> All of yes. you are banned. There's no shot. You guys can't disagree with the streamer. That's crazy. That's Whoa. crazy. So technically, this is a stream together, so like. No, we're you got you guys crazy. are banned. Banned. All of you. All of you are banned. I, the only way to freedom. save yourself from getting banned. The only way to save yourself from getting banned is to sub. You got to sub up right now. Otherwise, you're all banned. Look at him. He he just I'm, wants your money. I'm a, you're gonna I'm be, you're gonna get lightning lorded. I'm about to lightning lord crazy. every lightning single lorded. one of you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be really quick with what I want to say about QQ before this. Mods, things. precious balls. I, it, <laughs> for QQ, she if she uh, I'm gonna say two scenarios. She in no RNG situations would be where Jingle Yu is just because how much effing damage she can output in one single turn yeah. she would be in s plus territory but because she not oh. only has to deal with having the chance of not even getting an enhanced basic attack where she does not no damage but she does a lot less than she would have not only do you have the guaranteed matching set you also have to get altarkey which yeah. is e4 you know mm -hmm. so you have to get altarkey and you also have to get the matching set and hitting those two are a big difference from hitting no tile to just the regular enhanced tile to getting all tarky. Yeah. And that that's a realm of differences that screw with the damage so much that there's no way yeah. I can put a consistent DPS next to someone who has so much difference in how much damage you're doing per cycle. That's valid. Mm -hmm. I think everything else is pretty static. I know we didn't go over like beats here, but that actually that was something that I mentioned before where I said uh, Asta and Hanya needed to get bumped down and so did uh, Yukong, but what I see that you guys at Prywin did that I did not approve of, this was not in my my developer notes that I said go ahead yeah. and do, like I did not approve of this. Why the fuck did y'all, let me read this. Why did y'all push Sushong down? Let me see what happened. What was the my reason? Girl, I had well, so many showcases. I agree with Asta either. Her performance and usage rates have been decreasing over the last few MOC phases as players simply have more stronger options available to them let me see who's stronger than sushong here clara you listen, think more players have no clara? no 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 eo listen when you think about it if you're looking for a breaker which yeah. they has her have her classified as you're not telling me you're using sushong over luka i, I love mean, my girl sushong. yeah I but like him, wrong, but man i would 100 use a luka i would too e6 luka though e6 you see you know how much insane damage you can do with this e6 break listen um, the listen listen There's listen no way, dude. I hear you, right? I hear you. But C tier, like she could have just, right, you didn't. Okay, this was man. a personal attack because she was already at B tier. Now you bumped her down. She is down here with Misha, regular okay, Dan Hang, and two, Fire Trailblazer, and I Yukong. I have two, <laughs> I have two, listen, listen, listen. I got two nitpicks. One oh, thing no. that's always bothered me 100%, and I'm going to get to my other thing. Why is Gwen Knifen by herself and all the Da homies get to be an A? That's what I'm saying, man. I've never, under I've never understood why her out of the Dot family, Luca's there, <laughs> Sampo's there. Why is Gwen Knifen not there? She's better than Sampo, in my opinion. Like, she gives the utility that these other give. Like, they, she gives the uh, damage received buff. She has AoE damage and can reignite her own uh, buff or reignite her own burn. And these guys do all the same. I guess like Luca does more damage because he's bleed, but I feel like Sampo and Gwenaifen should be right next to each other. Like, why is she excluded from the dot family? <laughs> you said she doesn't do it. The burn doesn't do enough damage. She's not doing enough. So hear me out, chat. Hear me out. Let me tell you why you're not doing enough damage. But the deep you are not running her as what she should be ran as. You want know, you know to tell me she ran? You see this icon here that says breaker with the with the shield breaking? 
that's what Gwenyphon is. Gwenyphon is not a character to be used for the burn damage because burn is ass. Let's just let's keep that a buck, okay? Burn is ass. Gwenyphon should be used for break damage, and then the burn just happens to be extra. Yo, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. That's it. So if you use her the same way that you would think about using Luca and a little bit like Sway Yi, both the added benefit of having DOT. Now you have a better Gwenyphon. and that's where she goes. I've, I've been trying to tell you guys about Gwenyphon for the longest time. That is a break unit. That, <laughs> that character is fucking dumb. True. Have you seen break on Gwenyphon? She's hitting two to 300 Ks. Like Actual it's move. ridiculous. Yeah, she's and really debuff. good. And debuff? Yeah, and uh, she debuffs them on kid? her own. Yeah. We're talking about E6 Gwenyphon, so that's the extra stack of fire mm -hmm. kids on top of it too. Yeah, I oh. feel like she needs to be, uh, she needs to be with her family, bro. Put her with the sample. <laughs> Put her with her DOT family. family. Yo, right, yo, bro. Yo, listen, like. Listen. It's like gonna, the sister gets excluded, bro. Yeah, I'm Come gonna on, say, man. I'm going to say, if Well gets to BNB, Sushong needs to be in B. Because if you've seen Ruan Mei with Sushong, the boss doesn't oh know what a goodness. toughness bar is. Yeah. The boss yeah. does not know what a toughness bar Absolutely. is. Absolutely. so many times. The boss is like, I don't remember when the game was supposed to give you my shield, but I, I never had one in the first place. That's what Sushong does with Ruan Mei. For the um, reason so I, we mentioned we thought Zila would go down, Sushong faces similar issues. Uh, but Sushong, no, 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 what? But Sushong is labeled as a breaker, though. So, like, all she cares about is getting that toughness down. Maybe. Well, I think, okay, if we're looking at it from a break perspective, then yeah, I don't agree with C tier, but I think if we're looking at it from a DPS perspective, then maybe. But we're keeping the ideal scenario in mind, right? If we're keeping the ideal scenario in mind, she can't go lower than B tier. Sushong, out, out of this entire list, Sushong is like a top three hybrid character in the game. Maybe. Ma top three, top five. Somewhere around there. Sushong's I... ability to run a full crit build with minimum 150% crit break, uh, um, break effect. And mm -hmm. we're talking about an E6 Sushong. She's a mini Zila. Like that character runs attack boots and then gets 160 something speed with no, no speed boots. So she doesn't need a speed boost. She doesn't need any buffer. She's strong on her own. And then being able to shred through, especially if you're adding her with a May team, but you know, being able to shred through uh, the enemy's toughness meter, crack it, apply bleed when you do crack it. So it still does a big shit ton of damage. And then you also get free skill points every time you do it against an enemy without a bar. Oh yeah, that's also yeah. like and, another- And yeah. she also has, what is it? After skill or after ultimate, she immediately jumps ahead anyway. Oh, yeah, man. So you do yeah. skill, ult skill, and then whatever enemy had a toughness bar, they're dead. Like it doesn't yeah, exist um, anymore. Yeah. So I think yeah. Sushong definitely needs to be put in B tier minimum. I can't see that. Like I said, even if I think about it that way, it, you would have to look at her purely from a crit perspective. Like I'm not using this character to her full potential. Then I can see her being in C tier. If we're looking at it for the same reasons that I would think about it with Zila. But if I'm looking at Sushong as the hybrid character that I believe she is, Personally, I'm putting her right. I think she does the same, if not a better job than Sway Yi, because Sway Yi is limited to some things on her own as well, being that E6. But if we're keeping it at an E6 territory, personally, I think Sushong is on the same level as Sway Yi. If the that were not possible, I don't know. I don't know about that. Listen, if, if that were not, Sushong, but I like I like them I'm both. Dirty. But I think everything that because okay, hybrid Sway Yi is a lot harder to build and uh operate or pilot than hybrid Sushong and suit because Sushong Sway Yi doesn't give herself speed you can't run attack boots and you need someone else on the team and Sway Yi doesn't she doesn't like to be on other teams with a main DPS character Sway Yi's very weird about that right but Sushong Sushong is gonna do whatever she wants her time Martin of judgment is coming oh no I love, oh, no. I love him giving the uh, live updates as we speak about Right? This. He's like, oh, yeah, don't He's worry, like baby. Sway like, is oh, going down the D tier with Jane Ching. <laughs> my final, my yeah. final stay on, on the specialist, like, talk we've been talking about. Boo's going to in with, with the Dot family. Yeah. Uh, bring Su Shang up with Well at least. Yeah. And I think that's fine. I think everyone yeah. is where they're at yeah. in, in terms of that. The other nitpick I have really quickly. I don't know how much of a hot take this is, but I genuinely believe Lynch is us to your Well, we'll save that for another. Okay, another I thought that's where you're going, but my bad. Where are <laughs> no, you going? No, where are no, you going? No, no, no. no, that Silver Wolf needs to get bumped down to A. No. Yes. No. I, I listen, because when you think about it, no. Right, I listen, will allow A plus. I have another hot take. If we make if we make if we make an A plus, I would allow I'll an A plus. Put her, I'll put her in there. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll put her in there if if we make transitional tiers because there is no way in the world you're telling me that if we do move Sparkle down to S, that Bronya Sparkle Team Yun are in the same realm as Silver Wolf. They're, now in this day and age. Well, okay. Hold on. 
Okay. I, I think that argument could be made that silver is on the same category or tier as them. No, not anymore. No. I, I do. Okay, let's let's put it this way, right? You have too much AOE you, in the game. No, 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 no. no. You, now you have Sparkle, who is Model Quantum, which now boosts Zila. Silver Wolf wants everyone weak to Quantum. Or my bad. Zila wants everyone weak to Quantum. Silver was the only character that can uh, make sure that that happens alongside everything. By default, Model Quantum is, is now possibly a top five team um, or remains a top five team, maybe top three. So silver is essential to that. Boom, you're done. You yes, also have man. all the debuffs she brings to the table by herself. She has multiple light cone uh, options that she can run both paid for and free to play. And she benefits every single other DPS character in the game by being Sarah, able to implant yes, the weakness implant on them. <laughs> what are we talking about? Okay. It's not. Why Why not? Okay, because listen, Mono Quantum is what I would say to be one of the best investment teams because it never ages because mm -hmm. you can always guarantee weakness implant you can forever no matter what for as long as stall rail lives unless they say ban quantum from moc you're going to be able to put them imagine on yeah, imagine <laughs> no, for real. but you can literally put them on any side no matter what but compared to other dps characters and those teams that can come from other characters Mono Quantum cannot touch those. But there's, I, I just, I feel like no, I can't. Because all right, what, what are the top five? We have Imagine Dragon. He's up there now. You yeah, have Jing Liu. You have Dot. Dot. Right, Calf the teams. Mm -hmm. have, excuse me. Um, Doctor Numbi. Yeah, Doctor Numbi. So you got one spot left. Quantum. There's no. What, way what else? Quantum. No one else is stronger. Who who else are we putting in that same? They have the same team synergies. They achieve what they want, and they zero to three cycle. We've already said that Zila is straight up zero cycles whatever she wants if given. Uh, you know given the player skill and whatnot and if you didn't have silver on that team which i don't agree with not having silver on the team personally but you know i guess if you make uh, zila so strong that she can just blitz through whatever then sure but i feel like silver makes up for that um i feel two, like for yeah the, i guess that is three because monoclonal yeah you would get sparkles buff I feel like yeah. the situation that Sela would want to be in if we're talking about Monoquanta because she is the only well QQ is a thing too but um, those two characters in their ideal situation would already be against quantum characters so mm -hmm. in terms of Silver Wolf in thinking about the Monoquantum as why she's in S because she has a like cemented niche I wouldn't put her there because when it comes to the game and Sela and QQ being in their ideal situation which is every enemy the boss everything's already quantum although Silver Wolf does get his nice debuffs when it comes to anything else besides any other team she would want to be on you would rather have like Ruan Mei, Sparkle, Bronya, Ting Yu, and Pella there's so many other options that I feel like would do so much more especially with how we have so many more enemies on the field now than we used to mm -hmm. with them all having so much damage I mean so much HP and then also on the other side of that coin we have a lot of content now that straight up replace the character each time someone dies. Yeah. So even if you do debuff someone with Silver Wolf, they're getting replaced and the new one's coming in. Now you have to debuff them again. I, I feel so, like that's good for Zila though, because it, it's applying. For Stella, yeah, not yeah, yeah, for Silver Wolf. Well, in Silver's case, remember what I, I mentioned earlier, right? Where you build a faster Silver and then the event that, uh, the event that you and Silver have whatever going on, Silver's going to be able to apply not only the weakness stuff, but the weakness implants the defense uh drops and things like that so that zila has a much easier time triggering resurgence because without it we've already discussed it you've seen it i've seen it i've done it you're not hitting resurgence off of like a clean max hp mob from zila no matter who's on the team right like at that point you're team yoon sparkle and may all on one team and and that goes for any character right you can put those three characters with anybody and they're gonna make them do some crazy ass damage if we're talking about this purely from a team-based perspective Zila's not one-shotting these mobs to trigger resurgence if you only have hypothetically Sparkle and an E0 May. You you don't get that. You have to have, you know, an E1 May, May with Light Cone, or E1 Sparkle, the equivalent, whatever the case may be. But if you add silver to that team, it completes it. Like it allows her to do the one shots to the mob so she can trigger resurgence. And because Silver is building up ultimate, the uh the elite boss already and constantly has the negative 30 or 40 whatever percentage it is from the ultimate so you're still weakening two enemies at the same time i don't think any other character is doing that like Pela, yeah she's gonna hit everybody but then you don't have the weakness implant but in that particular regard i also don't think that Pela is helping break down the enemies the same way that silver is doing like hp I, wise i feel like in terms of like which was the original point silver being with the likes of like bronya tingyun and little sparkle if we did put her down there 
I still don't think she's as universal because we're we're still putting her only with Selin. Like what other team really, really, really wants for silver, silver or needs root? Yeah. Ratio teams that don't have E one S one Topaz. Bro, then just pull better, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. You said that. <laughs> just pull better. Just pull better. Also, no, okay. If we're looking at it from the future perspective, Akron. Um, sir, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're looking at it from that. You know, I don't know, man. I I just see Bronya and Ting Yun and Sparkle and see how universal they are and how many different teams they can be on. And mm -hmm. like, I can't put Silver on the same uh, level just because of like how we've been talking about how Stella is getting messed up by the game itself. Yeah. Like, we're getting characters or enemies that are just switching out enemies every single time you beat one up. And then not only that, now there's two elites. And when we used to have one, because when we used to have one, and Silver was able to put the weakness and find on her or on them, and the defense shred, the speed minus, attack minus, all that type of stuff, she was god tier for that. But now that we have two elites, now you're gonna have to waste two skill points for that. But and then you're gonna have to waste the all on We're one. talking about with Sparkle, right? Sparkle's giving you the overabundance of skill points as this. So like, I, I don't feel like that particular team, like the model quantum, because that's if we're sticking to that idea. With Zila, with Silver on the Model Quantum team, Sparkle has to be there. So we're not going to remove <laughs> what Sparkle's bringing to the team. If we're not using the the Zila on the team or whatever, then yeah, I could see a difference, right? Like if we were talking about QQ, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't use Silver with the QQ because now I am using an overabundance of skill points. But something that I see, and Sarah is actually the one that like worked with me on that too, was being able to use Sparkle. Most players that use Sparkle don't use uh, utilize her to pull up both DPS characters, right? Or have like your support and then uh, the main DPS. And because Zila in particular is moving at the speed of light, she doesn't need Sparkle to pull her up and she can't pull her up guaranteed every single time the way that, you know, 50% turns into 100%, but she can do it to silver. So there, that idea or the concept of being able to apply the weakness to the enemies, building up ultimate, that doesn't matter when you have Sparkle on the team because now you can alternate between Zila having the boost and then Silver being brought up to apply weakness and then Sparkle so fast she goes in between that and then just brings up Zila anyway. But I mean like that, I guess at that point we're playing a little bit of semantics and whatnot in the event that <laughs> Silver wasn't. I still think Silver is an S tier character given those things, but I can't see her in A because I still think she's better than Pela. I would, I would have to say like she's A plus. I gotta say real fast. I, I know, I know. That's that's because we mentioned that earlier. But like in the event that there's no A plus, <laughs> oh, if right? there's no A plus, then she gets to stay in S. I'll, okay, I'll okay, that. okay, okay, okay. She okay. will stay oh, in okay. S if there's no A plus. But if there is A plus, I would think, in my honest opinion, she should be brought down just because, like I said, and I saw someone in the chat say it as well. Like Team Yoon and Silver being in the same tier as Blasphemous, I I agree because like. Ting Yun's on every freaking showcase that there is on YouTube, like literally. Yeah. Like she's literally there mm -hmm. for every single DPS that there is. And that's why I'm saying these characters with how universal they are, that they can be on every freaking team that so Wolf, for the most part, a lot of times you can find some substitutes uh, mm -hmm. for where they're at. I don't know how much longer you want this to be, but I also have one other nitpick, but if hey, you want to- Go for it. No, 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 go for it. Oh, Ho Ho needs to be S plus. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ho Ho needs to be S plus. No Ho -ho way. Be S -plus. Listen, the reason why I say this is let's be honest. No matter if you're using Fu Xuan, if you're using, and I, let me build it up before people start saying, no way you're saying this. <laughs> Fu Xuan. Yo, Nyrex is on your side. Oh my God, they're all agreeing listen, with you. Yes, listen, listen, listen. For Fu Xuan, Ho Ho, Luocha, Link, Jopard, Bailu, their job is to keep you alive. And for the most part, if you build them correctly, they're doing their job. Now, when looking at Fu Xuan and what she gives with the crit rate buff, with being able to give you a little bit more HP with her being able to heal you, all good stuff. Ho Ho helps you so much offensively with a lot of these really cracked out characters like Jing Liu, being able to keep her in Bankai uh, a lot longer. With Don Hung being able to regenerate his own skill points, with Ratio being able to give himself more sub DPS uh, avail availability, Jin Yuen getting more stacks, Sele proccing resurges, Argenti getting his ult off, which hits for massive numbers. There's so many characters now at this point that benefit so greatly from Ho's re regeneration and also the attack buff that her offensiveness makes up for what we would say not the brick wall that Fu Xuan is, but I think with how much damage we're getting and how much extra abilities and ults and all that type of stuff included that we're getting from Ho Ho. Not only does she have infinite clans as long as she has her stacks up, like she's doing as much in terms of utility as Fu Xuan is doing. Yeah. Like that energy boost and that attack boost that she's giving everyone now is just so crazy because now we're at the point where it's less about sustain and more of 
how much damage can we do uh, yeah. before the enemy hits us at yeah, this yeah. point okay you know what i could i i see where you're going and given the fact that i think locha is lesser than oo i would have to agree by default but yes sir <laughs> i feel like and maybe this is just be something that we revisit once it happens when mm -hmm. adventuring comes out and we won't talk about like Ooh. leaks or anything like that but when adventuring comes out that's where i'm kind of like okay we can't have three like someone has to get bumped back down to s tier and i don't know if it would be ho -Oh or adventuring because he's bringing just as much if not more to the table and as of right now he's completing and accelerating certain team comps and he's doing um he i think i've counted so far three or four like adventuring is pulling in three or four different team comps on on his back like strong as shit so i i can't say like him and oh -Oh would be the same but i can say him and fu Shuin are very similar I, if not on the same tier i'd say of course not talking about you know the other stuff but i feel like they might be able to share depending on how he is when yeah. he comes out. I think Fushwin, Ho Ho, and Adventure might be able to share. Just because Fushwin and I, I saw someone say it in chat. Fushwin is for crit. Dot, uh, Ho Ho loves uh, Dot. Yeah. And these other characters can fit on these other teams. And I think Ho Ho actually has more teams that she can be put on than Fushwin because she can help all these teams that don't need crit mm -hmm. um, yeah. because of her ult. So depending on how Adventure is, I could only see them sharing a spot or quite literally bringing everyone down if he's yeah. just that broken. I don't but think he's that I, broken. Yeah, no, 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 I don't think he's that broken. If he, but. if he, is, like, if he was, that would be actually insane. But I, to I be support more it. I would support it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I wouldn't mind. But uh, if if we were to get uh, a character in the realm of being Fu Shuin here, I think they could share. In my own opinion, I could see it. Yeah. We could, okay. You know what? That's fair. That's definitely fair. But I think that would that should wrap it up. We had a nice little powwow today tonight. <laughs> that was, I, I enjoyed this chat. Let me know if you guys want to see more of these. I feel like I didn't you know, even get to say what I wanted. Yeah. Anyway, so as I was, I'm just oh playing. Oh my gosh! <laughs> what did you want to say, <laughs> bro? We. Oh my god! I was like, okay. First of all, I don't think Asta should have been dropped. We're going all the way back there because I. You're didn't that get to far say behind. That. Nah, Austin's yes, still there. because Sorry. you guys oh kept going, and I'm gosh. like, oh damn! Every time I try to speak, like, I oh never mind. I'm gonna wait until the end, I guess. Why do you need speed when you can get advanced forward? I'm gonna just say right <laughs> what? Why do you need speed when you can get advanced forward? You know what? You know what? Give me the power to server mute. The moment the Rihu <laughs> yaps too much, I'm server muting him. What? That's crazy. Chat, did I talk what? too much? Ch ch chat, did I talk too much? That that's the question here. If I see yes, you bit. actually will be getting banned. Don't forget to S tier. Yo, silence. I don't know if no, Arwen deserves not. S tier. But I you definitely don't need to be in D tier. All, all I wanted to say is I feel like Asta could have stayed A personally. I feel like Dance 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 with her speed ult is just so freaking good. Like, I, I don't care what anyone really says about that. I just feel like she's really good. And A for Asta. And the other thing I was going to say, and this is so off topic, so it's fine that it's at the end. When you're talking about Zila getting faster, I don't know why, but the Sonic X theme song cued in my head, like, the whole time. And then my brain just shut off. What the fuck does that have to do? <laughs> I need to go to sleep or something, man. Oh, my gosh, dude. All right, chat. Thank y'all for hanging out with me tonight. Thankfully, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, I appreciate you. Sure. If you made it to the end, type uh free gwen iphone no no free sushong free free no, yeah yeah yeah, free yeah, yeah. Free type, type free sushong yeah, yeah, yeah if you made it all to the end of the video type free sushong and then we're good all right but <laughs> that's gonna be it for me if you guys want to let them know where they can find you even though it'll be linked in the thingy anyway where are you pointing what are you to pointing my at to my... oh no that's the opposite direction ain't no way you your finger <laughs> in your finger don't make them type that yo barney listen could, could we can i can we oh my gosh listen. i can't speak can we have Free final sushan. messages before you gotta, we get uh... you gotta get sushan out of c tier b tier right. minimum you know i tell you what i tell you what you can just direct ant towards me if ant wants to give you smoke you just send them my way you know i'll pull up in the business suit 
I pull a Mr. Poke, right? And then I'll, I'm going to sit down and have the conversation with him. That's what I'm going to do. Bro, just, <laughs> just ask Barney for the Pride Win uh, website login and just change, just change it on my own. <laughs> yeah, nobody will know. All right, we got final messages before we go. Are we allowed that, Mr. Yo-Yo? Yeah, I, I said that. What do you want to say? Oh, okay. Um, I think everyone should rewatch or watch. All right, watch guys. I'll see you guys later. Oh, yeah, Peace. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My bad for yapping. What do you want to say? Just watch Sonic X. Oh, yeah. No, that's a wrap. We, we, we got to get out of here, bro. Like Sonic X. I, I love Sonic X. You're, you're crazy. Boston Wall crazy. Bye. Oh, my crazy. Yeah.